I do intend to file a motion to vacate against Speaker McCarthy this week. I think we need to this rip week. off the Band-Aid. I think we need to move on with new leadership that can be trustworthy. You just heard Matt Gates confirm that he'll be filing a motion to remove Kevin McCarthy from his position as House Speaker, which is bold. And the move comes after McCarthy struck a last minute deal with Democrats to temporarily fund the government until November 19th, with 90 Republicans voting against the funding bill. Now, that bill does not include funding for Ukraine, nor does it include these steep spending cuts that the far right wanted. And that has caused a lot of anger within the GOP, namely amongst individuals like Matt Gates, who were demanding it. Now, on Friday, we did a deep dive into this dynamic between Gates and McCarthy. And when it looked like a government shutdown was an inevitability. The main takeaway that I said was that basically McCarthy was bound by the demands of individuals like Matt Gates, since one of the conditions that he agreed to in order to become speaker in the first place was to allow a single lawmaker to challenge his position as speaker. But he defied Matt Gates here, and now Gates is coming for his throat in response. But unfortunately for Matt Gates, he may have overplayed his hand a little bit because he's starting to realize that his colleagues aren't really on board with his antics. For example, in that same interview with Jake Tapper, he admitted that McCarthy probably has the votes to remain speaker, at least currently. So how many Republicans do you think will be with you in your motion to vacate? Because obviously for people at home who don't know, you need 218 votes to get him out of the speakership. You don't have 218 Republican votes. You're going to need Democrats. Let's start with the Republicans. How many Republicans do you have? Well, enough so that when you host this show next week, if Kevin McCarthy is still the Speaker of the House, he will be serving at the pleasure of the Democrats. He will be working for the Democrats. The only way Kevin McCarthy is Speaker of the House at the end of this coming week is if Democrats bail him out. Now, they probably will. I actually think that when you believe in nothing, as Kevin McCarthy does, everything's negotiable. Okay, but let's and I think be, he'll cut be, a deal with, be, with the Democrats. Let's be honest here, though, because if you succeed in, in vacating him, you also will have to make a deal with the Democrats. You also will have to get Democratic votes to kick him out. Uh, absolutely. I will make no deal with Democrats and concede no terms to them. I actually think Democrats should vote against Speaker McCarthy for free. I don't think I should have to deal with oh, so anything. so you're not going to cut any deals with him? Absolutely not. And I don't think that uh, any Republicans uh, that ha share my view on Speaker McCarthy would cut deals with Democrats. But here's the thing. I'm done owning Kevin McCarthy, right? We made a deal at the end of Jan or in January to allow him to assume the speakership. And I'm not owning him anymore because he doesn't tell the truth. And so if Democrats want to own Kevin McCarthy by bailing him out, I can't stop him. But then he'll be their speaker, not mine. I mean, the hubris here is astonishing. You have one lawmaker openly talking about how he owned the Speaker of the House. And that's technically true, right? He was pulling all of the strings up until this point, but that puts him at odds with every other Republican who doesn't have as big of a say, who doesn't have as much leverage, whose priorities take a back seat so Matt Gates can be appeased by McCarthy. And on the House floor on Monday, Gates implied that he is still indeed planning to follow through with his motion to vacate. And he suggested that he'll be able to convince other Republicans to get on board who aren't currently on board once they find out the details about this secret deal that McCarthy supposedly struck with Biden when it comes to funding Ukraine. It is becoming increasingly clear who the Speaker of the House already works for, and it's not the Republican conference. Mr. Speaker, I would ask that these questions be answered soon because there may be other votes coming today or later this week that could, could be implicated by the answers to these questions. Members of the Republican Party might vote differently on a motion to vacate if they heard what the Speaker had to share with us about his secret side deal with Joe Biden on Ukraine. Now, we're going to come back to what other Republicans are saying in a moment, but Ukraine funding was not included in this deal, presumably to get Republicans on board, even though 90 of them still voted against it. But Gates isn't unreasonable to assume that there is some sort of a private agreement between McCarthy and Biden that Republicans currently aren't privy to. As The Hill explains, Biden alluded Sunday to the existence of a deal to bring up Ukraine funding. When asked by a reporter if he will be able to trust McCarthy when the next deal comes around, Biden responded, we just made one 
one about Ukraine, so we'll find out. But McCarthy said otherwise. Quote, I don't think the president implied that at all, McCarthy told reporters Monday morning. So McCarthy is being really coy, not saying that there's a deal, and he's basically saying now, look, I'm not going to agree to Ukraine funding even if I support it until we get border funding first. So if we don't get funding for the border, no funding for Ukraine. But still, the Biden administration confirmed that there's some agreement there, right? So I don't necessarily think that it's unreasonable for Matt Gates to assume that there is some sort of a deal. Whether or not he's going to use the details of that deal to oust McCarthy is an entirely different story because it just doesn't seem like he has the support. Meanwhile, after McCarthy put his speakership in jeopardy, arguably, to specifically shun people like Matt Gates. Well, can you guess who McCarthy is blaming for the potential shutdown and all of the shenanigans from last week? The people who saved his ass, the Democrats. He's actually trying to blame Democrats for the potential uh, government shutdown that could have taken place last week. And it's such a laughably dishonest claim that the CBS pundit who was interviewing him literally laughed in his face when he said it. I wasn't sure it was going to pass. You want to know why? Because the Democrats tried to do everything they can not to let it pass. They did Democrats dilatory. were the ones who voted you, for this did you wa- in a did larger you watch- number than Republicans to, to keep the continuing resolution alive. Did you watch Nine- the floor yesterday? Oh, yes. Okay. The the, Republicans voted against it. What a Weasley little liar. It's just you can't take him serious. This is such a dishonest person, right? And he knows that what he's saying is wrong, but he's still saying it to save face for what it's worth. Now, as the host pointed out, the Republicans were the ones who opposed it. 90 of them voted against it. Don't you think that if Democrats opposed it, they would have voted against it? Don't you think that if Democrats opposed it, they would be the ones trying to oust you right now and not Republicans? I mean, Republicans are so pissed that they are trying to oust him, at least Matt Gates is. And this claim is so serious that he actually talked to Trump about the ouster, presumably because if Trump's on board, then Trump is the one who could rally the troops to get McCarthy out of there. Have you spoken to Mr. President Trump about this? I have. And what, what was his advice to you? Uh, I think I'm going to keep that between the two of us. Have you talked to Speaker McCarthy? Hmm. But according to McCarthy, it's the Democrats who are mad. Unbelievable. Now, I do believe that Gates spoke with Trump because he is going to need Trump to rally the other Republicans to vote with him if they're actually going to get rid of McCarthy. But him not saying what Trump told him tells me that he did not get Trump's blessing. Otherwise, he'd be bragging about it, right? But I mean, what's important is that McCarthy doesn't seem worried, which says a lot, right? And in response to Gates's threat, this is what he said, quote, so be it, bring it on. Let's get over with it and let's start governing. So all of a sudden, McCarthy has this newfound confidence that wasn't there up until the last minute of last week. Hmm. Now, this newfound confidence tells me that someone or maybe multiple people gave him the assurance that they'd have his back in the event Matt Gage tried to oust him. And I'm assuming that this is the case because he would not have agreed to this deal if he actually thought that it would put his speakership in jeopardy, which is why it took so long, probably because he wanted to make sure that this wasn't going to lead to him being ousted. So he probably secured the votes or made some deals with other Republicans and possibly Democrats to make sure that him agreeing to this temporary funding measure would not lead to the end of his job. And he's right to be confident because now it appears as if this entire debacle is starting to blow up in Matt Gates's face and not in Kevin McCarthy's face. So Republicans are now publicly calling on Matt Gates to stand down. For example, here's what Republican Tom McClintock said in response to Gates's threat to oust McCarthy. We are faced with the threat that a Republican will move to vacate the Republican Speaker of the House. It will only require four other Republican members to join the Democrats to achieve this result. The immediate effect will be to paralyze the House indefinitely because no other business can be taken up until a replacement is elected. I cannot conceive of a more counterproductive and self-destructive course than that. The supreme irony is that this is being initiated by self-described conservatives. Do they honestly believe that when the Democrats side with them to remove a Republican speaker, that they will then side with them to name a more conservative replacement? Of course not. The Democrats will certainly recruit the most liberal Republicans to establish a left-of-center coalition to run the House. 
And that right there is why other Republicans are not on board with Gates's bid to oust McCarthy, because love him or hate him, McCarthy is the best choice for fascists. So if you oust him, then odds are you're going to get someone who's more moderate and who's not going to do as much as McCarthy is willing to do. And Republican Jason Smith echoed the same sentiment on Fox News. It's an absolute waste of time if he brings a motion to vacate. The only way a motion to vacate could be successful is if Matt Gates did exactly what he yells at Speaker McCarthy doing, and that's working with the Democrats. But in fact, he'd have to get more than 200 plus Democrats to to join him to remove Kevin McCarthy because more than 200 Republicans are 100 percent behind Speaker McCarthy. So needless to say, some Republicans are very much annoyed with Matt Gates to the point where they're willing to say that vocally. Even Newt Gingrich condemned his threat, saying on Twitter, is Gates secretly an agent for the Democratic Party? No one else is doing as much to undermine, weaken and cripple the House GOP. When you've lost Newt Gingrich, You've gone too far as a Republican, but it gets so much worse for Matt Gates because some of his GOP colleagues are now quietly trying to expel him from Congress, literally. As HuffPost explains, quote, we want him out. One unnamed Republican lawmaker told CNN in a report published Sunday, Gates is under investigation by the Ethics Committee over sexual misconduct, illicit drug use and corruption allegations. The Republican lawmaker told CNN Gates could be ousted by those who oppose him if he's found guilty. Fox News reported reported that members of the House Republican Conference are preparing a motion to expel Gates if the Ethics Committee's report does not clear him of wrongdoing. Quote, no one can stand him at this point, a smart guy without morals, one member said, according to Fox News White House correspondent Jackie Heinrich. Yeah, so we've only heard a couple of Republicans condemn Matt Gates publicly, but privately, they all fucking hate him. And Matt Gates is very much aware of the fact that all of the Republican caucus hates him. And in response to that last report from Fox News, he tweeted out this image of himself in order to make light of the situation. And I take this as evidence that he knows he's in deep shit and he's pissed off a lot of people. Now, someone who could theoretically come to the rescue and stop this ouster from taking place is the Speaker of the House. But he made Kevin McCarthy public enemy number one, and McCarthy was actually asked about this, and even though he didn't give a direct answer, the look on his face says it all. My colleague Jackie Heinrich is reporting that some of your Republican colleagues want to remove Matt Gates from Congress if the Ethics Committee finds he did something wrong. Uh, some suggesting he's a smart guy with no morals. What about that? Should he be kicked out of Congress if he did something wrong? The guys believe I, I let the constituents select who they want to be there. Uh, but you're responsible for your behavior when you're in Congress. I don't get involved in ethics complaints. I'm focused. Look, we've got 46 more days to get to keep this government moving to secure our border, eliminate wasteful spending, end the wokeism, and we only do that if we lock arms together. And we're going to do everything in our power. I'm not going to give up. If, if somebody in the, in the party wants to stop us from getting the most conservative bill, I'm going to go to the next and the next and the next. So ironically, Matt Gates could be the one who gets ousted, not McCarthy, but we'll just have to wait and see. Although some Republicans do think that expelling him is a little bit too far or a step too far, I should say, even if they don't agree with the motion to vacate. Newt Gingrich, for example, tweeted the effort to expel Matt Gates for being a destructive, irresponsible anti-Republican may be a step too far. Expulsion from the House requires a two thirds vote. However, expelling him from the House Republican Conference and eliminating all of his assignments and all resources other than those an individual member is entitled to would be a rational response to his suicidal efforts to cripple the House GOP. Now, Marjorie Green denounced his motion to vacate, but still said that he shouldn't be expelled, saying a Republican-led effort to expel Matt Gates absolutely will not be tolerated by Republicans across the country. I can guarantee you that. Remember when 11 Republicans voted against me and 10 Republicans voted to impeach President Trump? Both the motion to vacate and expulsion plans are wrong. In other words, guys, we're all fascists. Can't we all just get along? Well, no, because the problem is you have a bunch of unethical, power-hungry people engaged in nonstop pissing contests, and when you have that type of dynamic, things tend to not run very smoothly. But I mean, regardless if McCarthy is the one who's ousted or Matt Gates is expelled or both of them end up keeping their current positions, I know I'm going to sit back and enjoy every single second because the less effective the Republican Party is because of their infighting, the less harm they're able to do. And that's a good thing. So I say, let them fight. I'm going to enjoy the show. 
I'm gonna come. Do not come. Come. Welcome to the Come Zone. Come. Come.